Okay, in today's video, I would like to show you another great score that I picked up from my local ReStore. Now, if you don't know what a ReStore is, it's one of those Goodwill stores, Habitat for Humanity stores. They sell a lot of different things, and the money goes to help those in need. I was in there walking around, and I came across this 15 million candle power quartz halogen. It's a dual filament spotlight. Let me give you a closer look. As you can see, it's brand new. Over here, you could plug this in directly for power if you needed it, if the internal battery was very weak. Behind this cover, you have the 7 amp sealed lead acid battery. You have your on off switch, two positions, high beam, low beam, and when you press this button over here, there are five LEDs. It gives you an indication of the level of charge in the lead acid battery. The sealed lead acid battery inside the unit was kind of shot from sitting around, so I did order a brand new sealed lead acid battery for only $14. So I'm in this light for around 28 bucks, and it's a great deal because it's worth a lot more than that. I did consider swapping out the sealed lead acid battery with a 6.8 amp hour lithium ion battery pack, which is around 12 volts. The only thing, it is a little more money than the sealed lead acid battery, but they're also harder to charge. I intend on plugging in my Brunton folding solar panel into this unit to charge the sealed lead acid battery. Sealed lead acid batteries are much, much easier to charge. They can take a lot more abuse, unlike the lithium ion battery pack, so I did decide to stay with the sealed lead acid battery. Even though this is very nice as is, here's the front. You can see the blue dual filament quartz halogen lamp, glass. That's the other side there. And this on the bottom ratchets to any position that you like. You can go like that if you want. Even like that. So it's really cool. So fold that back, fold that back, and sit that back down. Carry strap and everything. I mean, it's ridiculous to not buy this for $14. And you have your wall wart. This is a 15 volt output around a half of an amp and it plugs right in to charge up the internal battery. What I intend on doing with this 15 million candle power spotlight is adding a lot of extra features to make it a lot more useful for me. I purchased this waterproof 12 volt accessory socket And I picked this up on eBay. It was very cheap. It was only a dollar. It was pretty ridiculous. I'm going to drill a hole in the side of the unit up here out of the way from the battery. And I'll be able to use that socket for plugging in my solar panel to charge the sealed lead acid battery. I'll also be able to use a socket if I would like to plug in a small power inverter, the ones that are 75 to 100 watts. That would work very well. I'll be able to plug in many different things that use an accessory socket. In addition to the accessory socket, I'm going to be installing a USB charging port. I could plug in my cell phone and other devices to charge up. This device takes between 6 and 24 volts and it reduces the voltage down to a regulated 5 volts, which will be coming right out of that connection there. I'm also going to install a switch like you see here. This is a single pole, double throw, two position switch. The purpose of this, I'm going to have the spotlight with the high and low beam, but I also want to have this like a lantern that's going to throw a lot of light out in one area if I need it. And to do that, I'm going to mount the switch somewhere. I've yet to determine where, but you will see that in a minute when it's complete. I'll mount the switch close to the handle for easy access. And that switch is going to be connected up on the other side to this LED pure white strip. So it's going to be really cool. I'll be able to put this on the ground, turn the switch on, 
and this is 58 LEDs and I think it's five and a half watts of light and it draws probably 450, 500 milliamps. It'll be right on the side so I could place it down, aim it in the direction I need a lot of light and I could turn the switch on and have that light. One thing to note, which I should have mentioned earlier with the accessory socket, is I'm going to be connecting a PPTC, which is a poly switch, also known as a resettable fuse. The other position for the switch that I'm going to be adding is going to go to the opposite side. All right. And I'm going to be connecting this emergency strobe light. Now, if you watch my previous video from the ReStore, you would see that I picked this up brand new from an alarm system, a fire alarm. It had a siren attached to it, and I only paid like $2 for this. And it requires 24 volts, but the battery in here is only 12, so I'm using this little boost circuit. You could pick these up online. They're very inexpensive. eBay, they're only like $1.50 each, and it's a lot easier than me making my own. So I'm going to take the 12 volt battery and it's going to go to the switch, to the circuit, to power the strobe. So I'll have a strobe light and the lantern on the other side, which is the LED strip, high and low beam on the quartz halogen, along with the accessory socket and USB port. Let me turn this around. All right, and remove all this. Make it easier to work. I also purchased a matching rubber cap like you see here. This one goes over the power charging cord from the wall wart. This one right here goes to DC 12 volts, accessory socket in your vehicle if the battery becomes too low. And that rubber cap will go on the USB port for charging. Behind here is the lead acid battery. Let me just unscrew that, pull it out. Okay, screws have been removed. It's like a rubber boot, very thick. Slide that down. And the battery should come out. This is a brand new one that I bought. Only 14 bucks for that one, it's a good deal. And here's my power supply wires. That connects to the battery, positive and negative. Let me give you a look inside now. Once that's done, I'm going to do all the work to the light, then come back and show you up close how everything looks. Okay, you can see the battery stops right over here, and there's a whole bunch of room behind that, and that's where the accessory socket is going to be drilled in. It's very easy to replace the bulb straight ahead, and I'll mount the switch somewhere at the top, which is above that area where the battery slides in. Let me get to work on this, come right back, and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, it's all finished. Over here is the single pole, double throw. This switches between the LED strip and the strobe light. There's the accessory socket, I'll show you in a minute. I position the switch here. This way when my hand is there, I can turn the light on and off. And I can use my finger right here. There's the LED light. It's very, very bright. It may not look that bright on camera, but it is. Over here is the 12 volt accessory socket. Let me turn it around. On this side, I have the strobe light. This is the one I found at the ReStore. I'm going to turn on the strobe by pushing forward. It's pretty bright. All right. Right here is where I decided to add the USB charging port. Let me lift that waterproof plug off, stainless steel screw. Let me plug this into my phone. All right. And there you go. 
is a little bolt in the battery indicating that it's charging. Pop that out. Over here is an indicator for the state of charge for the battery. The lowest is this bottom one which appears to be like an amber and then it has red going all the way up and it's fully charged. Put this back on, push it in, all right. High beam. And let me show you that that works. See the LED come on, and there you go, working fine. So now this is very, very useful for me. I have an accessory socket that I can plug a lot of different things into. I could plug my solar panel directly into it to charge the sealed lead acid battery. I have this nice light I could put down on the floor where I'm working. It only draws about 450 milliamps, and it will illuminate a very large area. I got the two spotlights, and I have a strobe in the event I need to signal somebody. Very cool. Can't beat it for 38 bucks. That's my total investment. 14 for the light, 14.50 for the battery, and another eight dollars for all the parts. The PPTC, the poly switch. What I did is I took the positive from the socket, positive leading to the switch, positive from the USB, joined them all together connected it to one side of the poly switch, which is rated three amps. The other side of the poly switch is tapped into the existing wire, which feeds the switch with the double spot. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.